everyone, I'm Miss Sharon. Welcome to Easter Jam. I'm so glad you guys decided to join us this morning. It's gonna be a great morning of fun. But there's just a couple of things I wanna tell you about Easter Jam before we get started. The first one is, well, this is a family experience, okay? So this isn't just for kids. This is for parents, grandparents, whoever's in the house. Okay, so in just a minute, I'm gonna have you hit the pause button and go get everybody, and then we'll get started. But the second thing I wanted to tell you is, is the only way you're not gonna have fun is if you don't participate. So, everybody all in. Let's laugh together, let's have fun together. This is a family experience, and we're celebrating Easter for goodness sakes. So, hit the pause button and go get everyone. Ready? Go. All right. Now, let's get started in three, two, one. Easter, a time for fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies. And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? Okay, hear me out here. There are two kinds of people in the world. People who love bees and people who don't. I actually think they're really cute and really young. So I would be in the camp of loving these. But let's see what you families think, okay? So give me a thumbs up if you love these. Let me see ya. Oh, I see Nora. Thumbs up, yeah. All right, give me a thumbs down if you don't like these. Oh, there's Anna Sunberg. I saw that. Okay, well, whether you like to eat these or not, doesn't really matter. Okay, I think you're gonna like playing this peep game. We're gonna call it peep wars, okay? Or maybe peep jousting championship, all right? So what you're gonna do, I'll give you instructions, you'll get your supplies, then you'll hit pause, play the game, and come back, okay? So first of all, here are our directions, all right? Everybody's going to need to divide down the room and make two teams for their family, okay? Two teams, all right? Each team is gonna have a peep. All right. Now, if you don't have any peeps, I have the bunny peeps. You might have the chick peeps, but if you don't have any, a large marshmallow will do. Each team needs one. Okay. Now you're going to take your peep and you're going to personalize it to your team. All right. Let's get creative here. All right. Kids are going to have to help the adults get creative. All right. You might want to get a Sharpie, make a mustache on your peep, maybe some angry eyebrows, maybe just a creative outfit on your peep. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you can tell your peep from the other team's peep, okay? All right, so now that you've got them decorated, let's say, then you're gonna get a toothpick for each one of the peeps, all right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this toothpick, this will be the joust or the lightsaber or the sword, whatever your family wants to call it, and you're gonna stick it in the front of your peep. Now, if you have an Easter Bunny peep, I kind of cut up the bottom there so he would set on the plate, okay? So you're gonna do that for each of the peeps. You're gonna put the toothpick in, in the front, and you're gonna set these peeps close together on a microwavable plate. Yes, parents, you heard me correctly, microwavable plate, all right? You're gonna get them close together, no social distancing problem here, all right? They need to be close together, facing each other. Now, when you get ready, everybody's ready, you're going to put it in the microwave and you're gonna set the timer for 45 seconds. Uh, but you will not need 45 seconds. Trust me on that, okay? All right, so you set them in the microwave, you set the timer for 45 seconds, close the door and stand close at a safe distance and watch what happens. And as the peeps melt and come together, the winner is the peep whose joust or lightsaber or sword, whatever your family's calling it, hits the other peep first, okay? So that's what you're gonna do. You got it? Say, get it, got it, good. All right, we're ready to go. Hit pause, have some fun, and then come back and join me. All right, see you soon.
All right, welcome back. Was that fun? Who won? Oh, I wish I could have seen. Here's mine. Ugh. And actually, this was a lot more fun than I thought it would be. I hope you guys had fun too. But are you ready for another game? Hope so, because here we go with the egg throwdown. All right, well, we're not really gonna use eggs in the living room. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a laundry basket and you're gonna need a lot of socks. Now, it doesn't matter if they're clean or dirty, no worries. All you have to do is make sure that they have a match. Each sock has a match, okay? So I'm gonna give you just a minute. I want you to pause, go get your laundry basket and a bunch of socks and meet me back here. All right, everybody got everything you need? Your laundry basket, your socks, perfect. Now, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to choose two players and you're gonna need to choose two counters, okay? Now, I'm gonna have you get your basket ready with those socks. First thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna dump all the socks on one side of the room and you're gonna toss the basket on the other side of the room, okay? Now, what the players are gonna do there's gonna be a player for each team, and they're gonna to race to the side, when I say go, where all the socks are. They have to find a match. Mr. Rick's Stormtrooper socks here. They have to find a match, and then they have to roll them up in a ball, or maybe we'll say an Easter egg, okay? And you have to stay there where the pile of socks are and throw the sock into the laundry basket on the other side of the room. Now. Whoever gets an egg in the basket, we'll call it the Easter basket, they get a point, okay? This is where the counters come in. We need two counters, one for each team, okay, to keep it on the up and up. Now, if you don't have enough people in your family for two counters, we're gonna have to call out for the honor system, okay? Parents, I got my eyes on you. All right, let's keep it honest and fair. All right, I think we have everything that we need. I'm gonna give you about 10 seconds to get everybody in place, and then we'll start the timer, okay? So I'll see you back here in just a minute. All right, everybody in their places, ready to go? Great, here we go. The countdown timer is gonna begin, and the Easter egg throwdown starts in three, two, one. All right, that was wild and crazy. I hope you have fun with that Easter egg throwdown. I bet there were socks flying everywhere. I wish I could have been there. Well, who won? Hey, let's say the winner gets socks. Uh, well, that's not very fun. Parents, maybe you can find a special treat, maybe a peep or something, I don't know, something sweet for their treat for winning. Well, the reason we're here and we're celebrating Easter is because it's the most happiest day of all days. Whether you've ever heard the Easter story before, or maybe you've heard it a lot of times, we're gonna be talking about what makes Easter so happy. In fact, this might be a good time to pause and wish people you know, happy Easter. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna show a few challenges. You can pick one and shout out to whoever you want, happy Easter in whatever way you choose. So pause the video, take a look at the options, and have fun, and I'll meet you right back here.
Ah. Okay, welcome back. I just got a bunch of texts from some family and friends wishing me a happy Easter. That was fun. I hope you enjoyed doing that too. Well, we're here celebrating Easter today because Easter is the happiest day. And even though we're celebrating it a little differently this year, it is still happy. Not because of peep wars or chocolate bunnies or Easter baskets, but because of what happened a long time ago on the very first Easter. It's the most powerful story in the world, yet it's simple. Simple enough to be told with laundry. In the beginning, God created everything. He formed people in his very own image. But then we turned away from God. Sin entered the world like a dark stain. Still, God loved us so deeply that he made a plan to rescue us. At just the right moment, God sent his very own son, Jesus, to live among us. Jesus healed hearts and minds and bodies. Thousands gathered to hear him teach. Instead of giving lots of new rules, Jesus turned things upside down by making it simple. Love God, love others. After three years of traveling and teaching, Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. Huge crowds gathered to welcome him. But while the crowds cheered for Jesus, the religious leaders made plans to arrest him. He was turning their world upside down, and they wanted him gone. As Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his friends, he told them that he would be leaving, but would return. His friends didn't understand. That night, one of Jesus' followers, Judas, led soldiers to arrest him. The religious leaders gave Jesus a fake trial and then sent him to Pilate, the Roman governor, who could have him killed. Pilate found Jesus had broken no law and tried to release him. But a mob called for Jesus to be killed. Pilate gave in and handed Jesus over to the Roman soldiers. Jesus was forced to carry the heavy beams of his own wooden cross. On a hill called Golgotha, the soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the rough wood. The soldiers and people who passed by laughed and mocked him. But from the cross, Jesus asked God to forgive them. Finally, Jesus called out, It is finished. Then he died. The earth shook. Rocks split open. Even the soldiers cried, Surely he was the Son of God. One of Jesus' followers took his body and placed it in a tomb cut from the rock. A huge stone blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends were devastated. They had believed that Jesus was the one God promised, the one who would rescue them, but now he was gone. Their whole world had turned upside down. Jesus' friends stayed hidden in fear for three days. But early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, a close friend of Jesus, hurried to the tomb. She planned to anoint Jesus' body with special spices. As Mary neared the tomb, she saw the stone had been rolled away. The tomb was empty. Mary turned to see a man standing near. She didn't recognize him until he said, Mary, it was Jesus, alive. Jesus told her, do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Jesus, God's son, became like us to lay down his life. Through God's power, he defeated death for all of us and sin was washed away. One day, he's promised to return so we can live with him forever.
Wow. Every time I hear the Easter story, I'm amazed. How about you? How God sent His only Son, Jesus, to defeat our sin, death, and the grave. It is amazing, isn't it? And it reminds me that no matter what I face, His power is greater. And I kind of like to look at it this way. Say it this way. I can fill in the blank because Jesus is alive. I can love people because Jesus is alive. I can be brave because Jesus is alive. I can have hope because Jesus is alive. Now, what I'd like for you to do right now is just to huddle up with your family and have a conversation. And I'd like you to answer this question together. What would I fill in the blank? I can because Jesus is alive. So huddle up together, answer that question, talk about it. I'll wait right here for you. Press pause. Awesome. I love this conversation. When I remember what God has done in the past, it helps me to trust Him for whatever I'm facing right now. And I hope you can say the same thing too. And I hope you'll continue to make some fun Easter memories today. In fact, I have a challenge for you. First of all, you need to pick whoever in your family is the technology guru or genius. Could be an eight-year-old, could be an 80-year-old. Whoever that is, you got it? Okay, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to take an Easter family photo. Okay, you can take it outside, inside, you can dress up, you can wear your PJs, you can smile, or you can make a goofy face, whatever you wanna do. Make a memory with your family this Easter in this photo. And if you'd like, you can share it on social media so we can all see Easter, hashtag Easter Jam 2020. Love to see it. So as soon as this video is over, we've got a great song to wrap it up this morning. A very happy song. In fact, you are not gonna wanna sit down. You're gonna wanna get up and dance and celebrate. More than any other time of the year, this is the time we should be celebrating. Easter is happy.
same 